Hey, I ain't want to do it to him, but I had to buy the demons out. Now I'm finna send my youngest coming to rage off. I know what happened in a minute. All right, let's go. All right, first topic. When is masculinity toxic? Talk to me. Masculinity is... Masculinity can't... I do believe in masculinity getting toxic. Okay. But I think the standard that we've set on toxic masculinity mm -hmm. is skewed. I think that the bar has the the amount of uh, acceptable masculinity has been lowered so much mm -hmm. to where just being masculine is toxic. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I think when you are overbearing, again, that guy that has to do extra to prove that he a man mm -hmm. instead of just being a fucking man. Yeah. Or, that's when it's toxic. That's when it's toxic. Or a guy who uses the fact that he's a man to mistreat uh, the feminine, the women. Okay. I think that that makes it toxic. So I don't think masculinity is toxic. I don't think it. I don't think it's masculinity that can be toxic. I agree hundred percent with what you're saying, except for the fact that the fact that masculinity can be toxic, and that's because I think that uh, I think that. At the points that you're talking about, it's not just masculinity. It's just overly aggressiveness. And I think that a lot of times that has to do with testosterone levels, which I guess we can attribute to masculinity. But like you said, it's not when a man says this. or well, a man Now that preference. you say that, I don't even want to call it toxic masculinity anymore because it seems like, like what you just said, it seems like it's a, 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 when I said uh, the level in which toxic, I mean, the level in which masculinity is acceptable, mm -hmm. it seems like the whole toxic masculinity thing, when you just named it being overly aggressive, mm -hmm. naming it toxic masculinity is just attack on masculinity. you just saying you agree with me. No, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it, now it sounds like, at first I was like, yeah, toxic masculinity. Yeah. But when you put it as over aggression, it's like, it's just an attack on being masculine. It's right. another way to attack the form of masculinity. Right. So that the bar can be lowered to even the more. Point where you don't, a man even won't more. be expected to be masculine. At all. And, and to be honest, you can be just, fluid. And I just don't think that's the world that, that like women especially want to live in. They, they'll say they do, but I don't think that's the world that they want to live You'd in. You'd be surprised. But Next that, you topic. got a point. You got a point. All right. Let's talk about uh, Javante Davis real quick. He had an issue with his girl where he was, uh, he was arrested for domestic violence. And then uh, a day after, two days after, there was a video released that showed actually he might have been the victim of domestic violence with scars and bruises all over. I want to know, what was your opinion on this case after you saw this? Originally, I thought, come on, bro, you got to know better. Not only can you not put your hands on a woman, but you're a professional boxer. Yeah. Like, your hands you can't are. put your hands your, on nobody. nobody. Your hands are weapons, for real. Yep. Like, you got to know better. And then I seen the bruises and all of that, and I'm like, damn, Shorty was fighting for her life in that motherfucker. Like, she was, she got some squabble in her, too. Yeah. And then I saw the two brushes with the shit on them. And I said, that's a real good. Not that there's any good reason to hear a woman. He might deserve a rematch. I'm just saying, it's like sometimes that kind of shit. That is crazy. I'm not sure. I'm I still not. I'm with you. I'm still not gonna say beat a woman up. No, I'm not gonna verbally say beat no. a woman up. But but that's I don't give a damn how mad to. I am. And yeah, you would be angry if that shit happened. I'm not gonna say beat up. <laughs> but if I heard that she got beat up for doing that. My reaction wouldn't be as... Well, I think the deal is this. A lot of times that kind of shit happens because a woman is in a situation where she knows that there's a lot more heat on him if he do something to me than if I do something to him. So a lot of times uh, in these situations, that woman will do things. She'll push the envelope in a, and she'll push the envelope as far as she can because she believes. And a lot of times it ain't that he can do. And well, and also a lot of times these women are believing that they just that that person, that guy has been raised in, in, a, in a way that he just won't hit you no matter what you do. You know what I'm saying? Especially a guy like this who can't hit nobody, right? And so this looked to be like one of those situations. The only reason, this is a boxer. The only reason, like he knocks niggas out. The only reason that she would do something like this to him is if she believed he wouldn't. He wouldn't hit her back. Exactly. And she knew that if she said anything <laughs> otherwise, all she got to do is say he hit me. And Even if he over. got all the bruises, mm -hmm. he hit me and everything over. And she knew that, so she probably felt safe. Well, they in an area where when they call, 
the police gonna come running mm -hmm. and they gonna take whatever you say serious. They exactly. not down now MLK and Belfort type shit. Well, where it's gonna take minutes. You feel me? Yeah. And she knew that. Bottom line is it's not always the woman that's that's the victim of domestic violence. This was domestic violence and, and this was toxic as well. Men so, just not gonna speak up on it. Yeah, and, and when they do, you know what I'm saying, do you know that there's no consequences for this woman again? For sure. There's no consequences. Unless for it was serious did. harm like murder, attempted murder, something like that, then mm -hmm. they get held accountable for both. Yeah. Because you just never imagine. You, I, I mean, how can you really fathom a woman beating the brakes off a nigga? Exactly. The way yeah. Krishan Rock be doing. Yeah, but. that whole situation <laughs> is good for TV and social media, but that's not a good yeah, situation. For sure. Uh, next topic. Um, I saw I saw a video of a dude going in on one of his homies for liking his girl's pics. And so it, it, apparently he was liking them like a whole bunch, right? And so that, that led me to ask this question. How much is too much? Um, how do you feel about the homies liking a picture of your girl? Um, if it depends on the picture, mm -hmm. number one. And it depends on the relationship. Okay. So me, you, me and you, cool. Mm -hmm. If we decide to say let's go on a double date or whatever, whatever, you bring your wife, I bring my girl, mm -hmm. and we all follow each other on social media. Shit, we all went to the same school, all that. Yeah. And you didn't like the picture that she posted. I don't give a fuck. Right. As long as it's not a, I, I would hope that my girl not posting sexually seductive pictures on on the internet anyway. Right. 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 But if it is something a little enticing, I would hope that. Somebody who refers to themselves as my homie had enough restraint or enough know better to not do no foul ass shit like that. Yeah. But I got niggas that say they homies mm -hmm. that will fuck around and be in my girl DMs. It's friend. niggas like that out here. And we all know that. So <clears throat> I feel like you feel. But I also want to throw another thing in there. Uh, I, I care about the... Uh, Number one, I, I can't be with a chick that's posting pictures like that, right? But I also care about how often he been liking these pictures. How often does, does he like her pictures? Is it everything? Is it everything that she posts naked, half naked? You know what I'm saying? Is it just the thirst traps where her, where the pictures where she's turned around and looking back? You know what I'm saying? Like, I would need to know that because a pattern of behavior matters to me in this situation when I'm talking about a homie. But also, I feel like you feel. It's certain pictures that if you, if you the homie... Just let that ride. Like, you know I don't want saying? my girl showing her ass or, like, even if she in a bikini, yeah. don't take the shot that's from the back with you turned around looking at your ass. Yeah. Don't post that online. That's just obvious for attention. Don't post that online. Right. But if, in the case she does post it online, you as my homie cannot like that picture, bro. Yeah. That's wild as fuck. That's wild as hell. But I, I believe you. I'm with it, too. Now, a lot of times, women don't shoot their shot at guys. So often, especially the baddest chicks, they don't feel like they have to. But we didn't live long enough to where women have shot they shot at us. So tell me, I want to know what's the craziest way a woman that shot her shot at you? Bro, this chick shot. So I had a kickback. Mm -hmm. And we was talking about it on Facebook. Okay. And a chick was like, hey, is it, is, can anybody come or is this like a select few? Man, it was the same people that's always here. Yeah. But me and Shorty always chop it up like through social media. Mm -hmm. Where they be and it'd be long conversation about like current event topics or whatever. I may post something and she come in her comment her her feelings on it or her thoughts on it. I do the same, whatever. So I was like, all right, you can pull up. Come to the party. She came to the party. I ended up not I didn't know she was on that type of time to shoot her shot though. Yeah. So I wasn't even giving her that type of attention. Yeah. And so she dipped, she burnt off. And when she was a, uh, she didn't burn off because I wasn't giving her that type of attention. Yeah. She stayed for the duration of the shit, but then she left. And uh, she texts me like some shit like, uh, I, I enjoyed myself or thanks for the invite. Maybe we can spend time again or some shit like that. So now I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like this ain't friendly to yeah. me. This type of shit ain't friendly. So um, she ended up saying that, oh yeah, that's why I came. Because I, I fuck with you like that. I'm feeling you like that. So once you told me I can come, that's why I pulled up. But I wasn't. This was a kickback, though. This wasn't like a you and her situation. Yeah, it was a kickback. Yeah. It was a kickback. But I wasn't like. I wouldn't have shot my shot at her. Right. You ain't like her like that. I mean, okay. she had a fat ass. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, it. I get it. That ain't that, I wouldn't have shot my shot at her. 
All right, so the so I had most of these sto most of my stories is just at the bar, right? You know, I'd be bartending in my spare time. And I remember doing this. I worked at this uh this reggae club when I first started bartending. Mm -hmm. And we threw this party where it was it was like a it was a Jamaican party, but it was like a uh it was a bachelorette party. Okay. We threw a bachelorette party and you see me there, I'm the male bartender and only other guys there is fucking male strippers and shit. Mm -hmm. Well, this old chick. Yo, that she had looked to be wild. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I, women strippers, and then they got the women. Look, I've been, <laughs> I've bartending. I've done four bachelorette parties, and mm -hmm. they all was crazy. Dick cakes, dick. Uh, uh, I believe it. Like everything. I believe like. it. But anyways, this this chick, she had to be like fifty something, and she had been uh, coming up to the bar, ordering drinks, and smiling and shit at me. Right. Mm -hmm. This old lady shot her drawers. At me from across the bar. Yes, yeah, shot them one shot her draws from across the bar. Never told my wife this story. This is gonna be the first time she hear this shit because I know her back then too. So, but that the shit was crazy, nigga. The, the lady was like fifty something. Did she like? How did you react to that shit? I mean, how, what I'm posting. What the like, fuck did you do when them draws landed right in front of you? So, so the draws landed on the other side of the bar, right there on the floor, and. I looked at it. At first, I didn't know what it was, so I picked it up. Yeah, I didn't know what it was, so I picked it up. Okay. And then the uh, the the bar owner, my manager, was he wasn't too far from me, and so I don't think he saw him fly, but he looked at me when I was picking him up, and then we both went to the back, and he asked me what just happened, and that's pretty much. So I didn't have to have an immediate reaction. Okay, to okay, 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 okay. You know what I'm saying, but. Did in she say end, anything to you? No, in the end, she got fucked up. And when she was leaving, she just kind of waved goodbye to me and she blew a kiss. She did a lot extra, but she didn't come say nothing to me. So you married. So I got out of that. But too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was probably her son age or some shit. So. Them, them be the ones they like. Yeah, I know. Next topic. So let's go to sports. Okay. So after it's been a lot of niggas in the league that's been dropping crazy numbers of points, right? I wrote this topic down after Luca's game. Luca had a triple double, 60, 20, and 10, mm -hmm. right? Before that, we got a 50 point game from Anthony Davis before he before he uh before he got hurt again. It was like 51 and or something like that. Something like that. And yeah. then we got a 50 point game from LeBron. We got a 50 point game from KD. Giannis. And from Giannis. And from Giannis. And then since then, we got a 71-point game from Donovan Mitchell. So I'm here to ask you, with all of these guys showing up to the forefront, in your opinion, who is the uh, who's the best player in the league now? <laughs> in your opinion? I'm Sorry. going to say, say Luka every time. You think Luka the best player Luka in the league? Luka is that guy, bro. Luka is the only one. And it's, uh, who, who I heard hit on this? Nick Wright from First Things First. Mm -hmm. He hit on this and I ain't heard nobody else say it. Luka is the only one that can keep his team at the top of the ranks mm -hmm. by himself. When Giannis' uh, partner in crime go down, Gian they team go down. Middleton. Uh, Middleton. Yeah. They team go down. When Kyrie ain't there, the team go down. When AD ain't there, the team go down. When Jokic don't got his guy, the team go down. But Luka ain't got nobody. And them niggas be at the top of the West all the time. Yeah. Like, Luka is that guy, bro. He unstoppable. He, it's just him, though. Come on, bro. Luka... Luka, it's undeniable, bro. Look, so Luca, Luca legend, bro. Luca and Monster, and these numbers that he put up is crazy. I ain't seen. I think I seen James Harden be the only person I've ever seen put up those same numbers, a sixty point. And they used up. to praise James when yeah, he was doing yeah. it. They never called him the best player in the league. I know you calling him that for not just this, but for everything because you felt like you felt like that for a while. Me, I think these numbers don't really skew my opinion. Um, I, I know I think these numbers are great, especially the numbers that Donovan Mitchell put up, because I didn't even believe he was a superstar before he before that game. I always thought he was a regular star. He just a, dude. a regular star because yeah. of what he was. I thought he was a Paul George level star. Okay. But these numbers say that he not seventy one. You don't you don't you can't just be a Paul George or anybody beneath that tier. No. And put up these numbers. Okay. So with, with just off of that notion alone, because yeah. I'm agree with you that I thought he was a Paul George level, but and I thought that was based off of him being in Utah. Yeah. Because they ain't got shit, so he the biggest thing smoking. But based off of what you just said, I need more than this 171 game. Now, I'm yeah, not saying do 71 no. more, 
times, but now your average, you can't be giving me 25 no, points. No, 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 it's not going to come down to average. You need to win some fucking games. Yeah, for sure. Y'all need to be there competing at the top of shit, right? For sure. So that's why I can't even say he the best okay. player. I, I was going to say, uh, I don't like him, but I, I still got to say Giannis. And that's just because I can't, I can't argue it. with it. I, that's yeah. It's 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 hard to argue against Giannis. Like I feel you with Luca, but um, I think Giannis just got the resume to say he might be that dude right now. Only and reason I I, like I'm gonna agree much. with you 100. percent Only reason why I put Luca above him is because Luca doing it by himself and Giannis not. But that's a good point that you made. If though. it wasn't for that, then I'm going. I'm, if Giannis was doing this shit by himself, I'm going mm -hmm. Giannis. I think let's switch it up real quick. Um, one of my favorite things about music and hip hop in itself is back in the day when dudes used to beef with each other and it was really rap. Like dudes used to go at it with each other and, and it would be all on wax. Yeah, they had a problem in real life, but they wasn't really looking for each other and shooting each other like like be happening nowadays. Back in the day, it used to be all on wax and you get to hear that shit. So I'm here to ask you, what, what's your favorite rap beef of all time? And my favorite rap beef that never happened was Drake versus Kendrick. Because I've been waiting that for Kendrick to get on his ass. That don't count then. But the first rap beef that has happened, my favorite rap beef that has happened, shit, I don't know. I might I might say Lil Flip and T.I. But only because I was so close to that. Like I was there yeah. for that shit. Yeah, yeah. Outside of that. I remember that. Hey, I remember some of them tracks, too. He had that track over uh, over 99 Problems going that flip. Then outside of that. And, and, and they boxed. Well and shit didn't go well, yeah. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Outside of that, favorite rap beef? Like, I didn't get to experience. I was alive when Biggie and Tupac beef, but I wasn't cognizant. Mm -hmm. Of what was going on. Right. I heard the songs that my parents were listening to or the songs the radio play, but I didn't have no understanding. Right. Definitely. It was unfinished. If we want to say this wasn't a beef, but it was enjoyable, what Jordan and Tori did. Okay. When they was going back and forth at each other, dissing each other, but they cool though. Yeah. They wasn't really beefing for real, but it was like a spark. Yeah. A musical spark. And they did, they each did like three or four songs a piece. That might have been the most entertaining one. One of my favorite, one of my favorite artists, if not my favorite all-time artist, is Eminem. And I remember Eminem going at it. I, matter of fact, I'm gonna say my favorite all-time beef was the beef that uh, Shady Aftermath has with uh, with Murder Inc. That's been one of my favorites. Uh, ja Rule versus Fifty Cent is where it started, but then it ended up becoming more. Uh, it ended up becoming all of Murder Inc. and all of Shady Aftermath. It's tracks for days documenting this beef, and even now they still go at it. Like Larry Bird and fucking Magic Johnson. Like the beef still alive. Like and to them, it's like. But it ain't. I, I don't think to the in today's time they going at it. I think it's no, no, fifty no. just embarrassing niggas. Well, yeah, I, I don't think they on the same. I don't believe they ended up on the same level now. Yeah, so but they it ain't nothing they can like do when for they, when they when they refer to each other. You know, it's always some shade, and that kind sure. of shit is like nostalgia to me. That take me back to listening to some of these tracks For where sure. they used to really go at it. Yeah. Now, just as an honorable mention, I also liked to watch. Uh, for a while, I liked watching Game go at Fifty Cent. I watched. I, I liked Fifty Cent and Game for a while until Game started taking it. Like he, this nigga started dropping. Uh, documentaries and DVDs and had a whole stop snitching stop line camp I think he just took it way too nobody should nobody should move you like somebody you don't like especially shouldn't move you to that extent but when yeah. it was on as far as the raps went 300 bars was fire 300 bars was fire I know that fire. whole 15 18 That's minute a fact. shit 300 bars was fire that shit was fire